be all right if the wind was in our sails. So we'd be all right if the wind was in our sails. So we'd be all right if the wind was in our sails. And we'll all hang on to be high. And we'll Good morning everyone, hope you're all having a wonderful day today. Today we're going to be talking, as you can probably tell by the title of the video, about one of my favorite upper receivers that I've ever had the pleasure of shooting to this date. But before we get into that, I do need to thank the sponsor of the video, which is of course Gun Deals. If you don't know, Gun Deals is just a website that provides links to the best deals in the industry. And on top of that, they've been uh, supporting me financially uh, in this channel so that I can spend a lot more of that money on ammunition, get you guys a lot more cool footage and some cool gear, including some new guns that are going to be coming up shortly. So go ahead and check them out at, of course, Gun Deals. And remember, they don't buy or sell anything and they don't take your money. All they do is provide you with links to the best prices in the industry. On top of that, if you'd like to help me out personally, you can, of course, like, share, and subscribe because uh, all that sort of stuff is free and it helps me out quite a bit. On top of that, you can comment literally anything or you can comment about the fact that I'm missing about two pounds of hair uh, down in the comments section, which will be very, very interesting. Of course, I also have Subscribestar, which is basically a pro to a Patreon. You send me some cash and I send you some extra content every month. On top of that, uh, if you need AR-500 steel targets, you'll see me shoot them in literally every single video that I make. Um, you can, of course, though that'll be the first or second link in the description. One more thing, and I know it's quite a bit to get through but we are also doing a giveaway with delta team tactical this is a complete rifle that will be given away to one of you guys it'll be the first link in the description uh, if you guys want to go ahead and check that out of course it's not affiliated with youtube or instagram but again if you want to check it out we are giving away this rifle exactly as you see it now let's go ahead and talk about this bear creek arsenal 11 and a half inch upper receiver uh, this is of course the grove tech sentinel sling and just for simplicity so it's not knocking everything around i'm going to go ahead and take it off but but that is the sling that was used in testing. Now, right off the bat, of course, I do wanna say that I paid my own money for this. Now, Bear Creek Arsenal has sent me quite a few things in the past. You can go back and watch all of those videos. They're actually the first company to ever send me an upper receiver, so I'm very, very thankful for that. But I did spend my own money on this barrel. As soon as I saw that they had had them in stock, I bought it basically the first or second day they were available uh, to get one, because I know I could have probably bugged Tim enough to send me one for free, but I think it's a worthwhile product, and so I spent my own money on it just know that there is a relationship that there and it has been there for the past year or so so for those of you who don't know bear creek arsenal is an actual oem manufacturer so they actually not only manufacture their own barrels but they manufacture barrels for lots of other companies as well because they do actually produce things so they make a lot of their own components uh, upper receivers and different things they're billet upper receivers anyways so they actually produce a lot of things and with their new 11.5 barrels i'm pretty sure it's the first time they've really branched out into uh the more hot topic sort of barrel lengths because everybody now wants 11.5, 12.5, 12.7, 13.7 and a bunch of really indistinguishable barrel lengths that are out there. But generally speaking, Bear Creek Arsenal had always made, you know, 7.5 to be the shortest, then 10.5 for their standard pistol length, which is a really good pistol length as well. And then they would go up to 16, 18, 20, 24, that sort of thing. So they never really had a barrel length for the kind of in-between pistol SBR length, uh, the 11.5, 12.5, 13.7, that sort of thing and they've started with the 11.5. Now, if you don't know, 11.5 versus 10.5 is kind of a dumb discussion. Inside of 75 yards with M193, they will both basically perform 
very similarly beyond that 75 yards to about 125 yards to 150 yards somewhere around there is where the extra velocity of the 11.5 really matters because of course 556 needs velocity to do its uh, expansion and fragmentation so that extra barrel length does help out in those ranges but if you were to ask me which one is better for a home defense gun or truck gun uh, they're virtually indistinguishable as, again, in those very, very close, presumably close ranges, you're not really going to see that big of a difference. And again, it's only an inch off the end, so you're not really gaining that much in maneuverability versus the extra velocity. Most people would probably say 11.5 is a better overall length, and I tend to agree with them. Though, again, 10.5 is still a perfect barrel length for most people in most situations. However, the 11.5 can flex a little bit better into different situations. So in terms of testing on this barrel and upper receiver group we're at around a thousand rounds probably 60 to 70 percent of that really crappy steel ammunition and then the rest of that some reload ammunition that i did some 62 grain reloads m193 m855 and a little bit of match ammunition just purely for accuracy testing so just to get some of the basic specifications out of the way we are dealing with of course an 11.5 inch 556 chamber barrel it is a one in seven twist which is excellent for just about everything uh, it is a nitrided barrel and this is a carbine length gas system now, it is nitrided not only on the barrel, but also in the receiver extension as well. And it does, of course, have the M4 feed ramps, as you would expect. 4150 on top of that is also a very strong, very durable barrel steel. So you're going to get at least 10,000 rounds of uh, barrel life out of it, if not quite a bit more. Now, that's kind of the base boring stuff. I, I like the 556 or the M4 profile of the barrel itself. I believe it's 23 ounces. I could be wrong on the weight. I'll post it in here if I am wrong. But again, M4 profile for 10.5, 11.5, and 12.5 are really all just fine. Even government profile in a 12.5 is just fine. Tends to be a little bit more accurate uh, than some of the other guns that tend to cut off weight on the end of your barrel, which is uh, the last couple inches of your barrel is what really matters when it comes to accuracy. So keep that in mind. And the last thing that is going to be very important for this barrel and one of the reasons why I like it so much is going to be the gas port size. Now that is of course the size of the gas port on the physical barrel itself. How big that is generally speaking determines how much gas you're getting back in the system. Uh, the gas port size that they decided to go with on this barrel is 0.070. Now that number doesn't really sound like much. That's very very small but that is a very very important number. For instance on the Roscoe 105 and 125 that I've also previously reviewed this is the 12 or sorry this is the 105 version they both have gas block sizes of around 0 0.072 now 0 0.072 versus 0 0.070 is very very similar however in terms of effect that very small difference even on this 11.5 which has a much longer dwell time than on a 10.5 with a standard carbon length gas system just because that extra inch of barrel is actually more like more like 50 percent more dwell time so with that 0 0.070 uh, I get an ejection pattern with just a standard carbine buffer, carbine spring. The entire time I've shot this upper receiver, I'm not using an H2 buffer, an H1 buffer like I usually do. I'm literally just using a standard carbine spring, carbine buffer, nothing funny going on in the back. With M193 and my reloads, I'm getting an ejection pattern of around 3 to 3.30. With M855 was the only ammunition I was getting any forward ejecting at all. It was doing it at about 2.30 with M855. And with steel case or weaker ammunition, it was running anywhere from 3.30 to 5 o'clock, depending on the steel case ammunition. So what that means for me is that this upper receiver is basically gassed perfectly. Now some really, really high end upper receivers will have their gas turned down even more like 0 0.065, 0 0.067, somewhere in that range. But 0 0.070, at least on this barrel in this specific kit configuration, again, there's nothing funny going on in the back end, just standard uh, carbine buffer, carbine spring, so a three ounce buffer in the back. It is extremely well gassed. I would not change anything in this system. Uh, something that I should also mention, is that because again i can't put like 10,000 rounds through it as i just don't have the finances to do that much ammo through it um the entire time when shooting this upper receiver group i did not clean it whatsoever and about half of the time i was shooting suppressed so that being said reliability i did not have well actually technically speaking there was one sort of malfunction but it was i could also blame that on the magazine as the magazine i was using is a terrible one of the utg magazines it's a terrible magazine i've had issues with it and other guns but basically 
on round like 990 after not being cleaned, shooting lots of crappy steel case, shooting suppressed, all that sort of stuff. It failed to pick up a round, but again, it only did that once from that crappy magazine, so could theoretically be the magazine issue. On top of that, not really malfunctions, but every now and again with that really crappy Red Army Standard 5.56 ammunition, just terrible ammo. It's the worst ammo I've ever used in any of my 5.56 guns. It would not lock the bolt back unsuppressed. Uh, very, very soft shooting, of course, but just would not lock the bolt back on my uh, magazines, my Magpul PMAGs. And that happened a couple times, but again, only with that really crappy ammunition. And again, that was around the 950 to 990 round mark. So in terms of actually shooting this guy, it is extremely pleasurable, it's extremely flat and very, very fast. It is very easy to pull the trigger as fast as you want, whether you're doing like build drills or something else inside of like 10, 15 yards, and to have all of those rounds impact in a nice four, five, six inch circle, something like that, depending of course on your recoil control. But uh, in terms of me shooting this, this is currently my favorite upper receiver and I would push it f far above both of my Roscoe 10.5 and 12.5. The 12.5 is uh, better than the 10.5, but neither of them are as good as this one. And again, keep in mind that this is, theoretically speaking, a very budget upper receiver. Now this is a hodgepodge of my own parts that I slapped together, however, on Bear Creek Arsenal's website. Um, they are running the 11.5 upper receivers either in rear charging or Gen 2 side charging for like 280 bucks which is a very very good deal and that's complete with a bolt carry group and everything so on their website it is a very very good price right now and unfortunately they don't have the nitride barrels like i have in stock but if you can live with the phosphate finish uh, then i would absolutely pick one up because again they do shoot extremely well even when they're suppressed uh, i wasn't getting like a lot of gas back in my face or anything like that again they could make the gas port sizing a tiny bit smaller but because again they don't know really what lower your receiver you're putting on it and they're probably assuming that you're going to be putting a lot of really crappy ammunition through it 0 0.070 gas port sizing on this 11.5 barrel is perfect in my opinion i honestly wouldn't make it any smaller or bigger i think it is perfect just the way it is now all of that being said the finish the machining uh, how it shoots all of that is excellent, but is it actually accurate? Uh, which is a very important thing uh, when talking about any sort of barrel or upper receiver group is how well does it shoot? Uh, it's one thing to shoot softly, but if you can't hit what you're aiming at, then, uh, then it doesn't really matter how soft it shoots, if that makes sense. Well, with this upper receiver, with this Vortex, this is the Viper PSG, PST Gen 2. Uh, I took this upper out to just over 500 yards. I believe it was 531 yards. Uh, and again, with just my 62 grain reloads, uh, it was fairly consistent at 500 yards. It was late. It was laser beam at 400 yards, but at 530 yards, it was it was having a little bit of issues. We're up in Capital Forest. It's very high out there, and there's lots of wind. Uh, but I was still able to make hits with relative ease. So in terms of taking this out to distance, I think for an 11.5, 530 yards is asking quite a bit of a very short barrel like this. Yes, of course, you can always take it further and make further shots, uh, but for me and my ammunition not really using match loads, uh, 530 yards is where I would like to top out, especially when we're only using a six power scope. Now, in terms of accuracy, accuracy testing, I really only tested a couple loads. I tested some, I actually tested that Red Army standard ammunition, which is just terrible ammunition. It grouped like three inches at 50 yards, so about six MOA. Uh, and I've had that ammo cause problems in other guns. So unfortunately, like I said, I did buy a half case of it and it just does not shoot well at all. It also is the softest shooting steel case ammo I've ever used. It ejects at like five o'clock on most guns, so it barely runs the gun. But with the 75 grain PPU match ammunition, it's just a standard hollow point boat tail 75 grain round uh, i was getting about one inch at 50 yards so about two m away which isn't great and then with imi i was getting a weird issue where the first round that fed off the magazine the 77 grain imi razor core ammunition the first round that fed off the magazine would print like one inch to the left and then the next four rounds would print in the same hole and then if i loaded another round again from the top of the magazine it would again print off to the left somebody out there that's really good with that sort of thing can tell me why that is. I wasn't sure why I was seeing that, but basically the first round, no matter what I did, what it fed from the magazine was shooting it about uh, an inch to the left or so. And then the rest of them were basically in a single hole. So 
I don't doubt that with the right load that it particularly likes, you can get very, very close to one MOA or, or somewhere in that range. But again, I was able to take it out to 530 yards without issue, 400 yards, it was a laser beam. Uh, so I don't think that the accuracy in any way is like match quality. I don't think this is gonna be one MOA with most ammunition. Uh, it might really like one or two loads, but for the most part, I think what you're looking at is a very, very usable to one and a half to three MOA with most loadings is what I would imagine. So if I had to ding the barrel on one thing, I would say that it's not the most accurate barrel in the world, though again, it is just an 11.5 M4 profile barrel. Uh, it's not designed with match accuracy in mind. So for me and my personal use case scenario, well, basically this has been my home defense gun for quite a while now. Um, it works more than more than well enough for what I need it for. Just keep it in mind that it's not going to be a match accurate gun. It's not going to shoot one MOA with all your loadings. But again, it's been extremely reliable and I did clean it after a thousand rounds. So it is all good to go now. Uh, but it has been extremely reliable, suppressed, unsuppressed, crappy ammunition, really good ammunition. And it shoots extremely softly just with in any configuration that I have it in. It is just a laser beam. So we might as well talk about the rest of the upper receiver and everything that's going up on here for the last couple minutes. Uh, for the light that we're using up front, this is the Streamlight. This is their ProTac rail mount HLX. It is basically the 1000 lumen version of their rail mount light series. Uh, it's very, very good. It comes with everything minus the 18650. It comes with CR123As, which only have a maximum lumen output of 700. But if you upgrade to an 18650, then you get the full 1000 lumens, which is really good. 27,000 candela. So this will absolutely get you out past 100 yards. We're gonna have a video covering these because I bought this one for 80 bucks off of eBay, which is an exceptional value, again, considering that it does come with an integrated Picatinny mount, uh, your tail caps, uh, light switch, all that sort of fun stuff. For the muzzle device, if I was not running it suppressed, I just had an A2 flash hider on it. I really like A2 flash hiders. Does a really good job of keeping the barrel flat as well as mitigating flash without making it too loud or obnoxious. Uh, the rail is a seven-sided M-lock rail. I don't really have anything on it other than a small piece of Picatinny rail up here. It actually used to be a 15 inch rail, uh, but again, I wanted to put it on this 11.5, so I cut it down to about 10 inches, so I still have access to my muzzle device, so I do like to have a little bit of barrel showing off the top. May bug some people, but I really like it. It does also have two anti-rotation tabs on either side to keep it from twisting off on you because it does just use a simple clamping method on your barrel nut. Uh, for me, it has worked just fine, and I've shot it in a lot of really weird positions. Uh, the optic and mount, uh, is probably my favorite combo to date. This is actually going to be next week's video. Uh, really all of the next like four or five weeks are gonna be some of my favorite products. They're all gonna be enthusiastic recommends for me. This is actually gonna be next week's video. I am running it in a worn super high mount, so it is a 193 mount, so the center line height of the optic is 193, and this is the Vortex Viper PSD Gen 2, which I got for $440 from Botac. This is the MOA version of it, uh, which has been exceptional, great glass, all that sort of fun stuff. I am running a Magpul QD offset, and that is how I'm attaching my GroveTech Sentinel sling. The upper receiver is a standard forged upper receiver. I believe it's actually an Anderson upper receiver, uh, just whatever I happen to have laying around. And the lower is one of my oldest Palmetto State Armory lowers. And in the back, we are running just a carbine buffer and carbine spring, and it still performs excellently. If you wanted it to perform a little bit softer, if you were just planning on running only M855 or M193 through it, you could definitely go up to an H1 or an H2, and it would soften it up a bit more but again you don't really need to and if you were doing that you were going to lose some reliability on the low end of the ammunition spectrum so that's about it for the video guys thank you so much for watching i hope you all enjoyed don't forget uh, you should check out this gun in the description so that you can win it just by entering it there's only a couple steps that you need to do to enter it and you can take this home and i will ship it to your door and if you guys don't mind go ahead and like share and subscribe before you leave and like i said thank you very much for watching i'll see you in the next one peace out